Hey, welcome back. In this part of the series, we are going to discover a couple debugging features in ES6. The first property we are going to see is name. This property is supposed to return the name of a function, but that's not always the case since the returned value can be one of a variety of values depending on the way the function was declared. So we could get the name of the function, obviously or the name of the variable containing the function in case of a function expression. In addition to that, it could be anonymous, bound in the name of the function, get or set followed by the name of the function, etc. So that being said, let's try some examples. In case of a typical function declaration, as you can see the name property returns the name of the function. In this second example, we are creating an instance of function using the new keyword. In this case, name returns anonymous. Now, in the third example, we have a function expression, and name this time returns the name of the variable containing the function. In this fourth example, we have an object that has an anonymous function as a value of one of its properties, and name here returns the name of the property. In this fifth example, the name property prioritizes the name of the function over the name of the object property. In this example, we are using a shorthand object method, and here obviously name returns the name of the method. In this last example, we are creating a symbol without a description as a property name, and as you can see, name returns nothing. Now, on the other hand, if we add a description to the symbol, the name property returns that symbol's description. These are enough examples for this video. I'll leave a link at the description below if you're interested in the rest of the cases. Prior to ES6, JavaScript developers used to create classes using functions and had to make sure that the class name is Pascal case as a best practice to differentiate it from a regular function. So here, to create an instance of the player class, all we need to do is to use the new keyword. Now, as you might have noticed, although we didn't use a return statement within the function's body, it still returns a new object since the engine knew that we are actually referring to the player function as a class, not as a regular function, by using the new keyword to create the player1 instance. That said, let's try to create another instance without using the new keyword. As you can see now, printing the value of the player2 instance shows undefined in the console, because it's empty, since this time the engine looked at the player class as a normal function, and as it has no return statement, the player2 variable didn't get any value. So, to know how a function has been called, whether as a regular function or as a class, we can use the instance of operator to check if this which refers to the current object is an instance of the player class or not. Even if this way of verification works, it still doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be always correct, and here is a counterexample. As you can see, we use the call method to borrow the constructor of a player class in order to change the player name property of a copy of the player1 instance. So basically, we are creating a new instance of the player class using a copy of an existing instance instead of using the new keyword. And as you see, it says that the player3 instance was created using the new keyword when it's actually not the case. And this is where the new ES6 meta property called new.target comes in. 
Now all we need to do is to change the condition to use the type of operator to verify if new.target is actually filled with the target class constructor or not. And this is it for this part of the series, so make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.